Hello, smart scholars. This is Dr. Eve Mboso. Welcome to another section on the endocrine system. So today, we're going to be looking at secondary messenger systems. When we look at the classification of hormones, we said some hormones can be classified based on their mechanism of action. By this, we mean that some hormones act via secondary messenger systems or primary messenger systems. What's the secondary messenger system? These are hormones that are hydrophilic. In other words, they form the hormone receptor complex outside the cell membrane and send signals within the cells. Now, what are secondary messengers? Secondary messengers are molecules that are activated in response to signals from the hormone receptor formed outside the cell. And these signals cause a series of changes Hormones that cause that use the secondary messenger systems are epinephrine, insulin, or the non-steroid hormones. Now, this is what happens. This is the primary messenger, which is the hormone, binding to the secondary messenger. By way of example, this is a tyrosine kinase. So this is a kind of receptor that is responsible for the action, mechanism of action via insulin. So now you have the hormone binding to the receptor and then the receptor, all right, hormone receptor complex sends signals. First of all, G proteins are activated. These G proteins cause a signaling cascade that causes the activation of enzymes, opening of ion pores and other cellular mechanisms that, all right, cause the hormone signaling system. So this is what happens. The Example of secondary messenger systems are calcium ion, diacylglycerol, we have CAMP or CGMP, what we call cyclic adenosine monophosphate or cyclic guanosine monophosphate. These ones are from the nucleotides. Then you have the phosphoinositol triphosphate molecule. So you ha also have the tyrosine kinase. These are examples of secondary messengers. So what happens is that they are activated in response to the primary messenger molecule, which is what? The hormone. And then when they form the hormone receptor complex, G proteins are activated. So I'll just put this G proteins. These are activated, and these in turn, all right, activate the secondary messengers. So we have the diacyl glycerol, you have the calcium ion, you have the phosphoinositol triphosphate, okay, you have the tyrosine kinase, and then you have cyclic adenosine monophosphate and cyclic guanosine monophosphate. So these are examples of secondary messengers. Now, we go over to the primary messengers. These are steroid hormones, okay? And because they are lipid in nature, they can transcend the cell membrane. So this is what happens. This is the steroid hormone. What happens is that it transcends the cell membrane and forms the hormone receptor complex within the cell. So these ones form the hormone receptor complex in the cell, while this other class of hormones form the hormone receptor complex outside the cell membrane. Now, when the steroid hormone transcends the cell and forms the intracellular hormone receptor complex, it migrates all right, to the nuclear membrane where it binds to hormone recept responsive elements. So I will just put HRE. So these hormone responsive elements, all right, binds to the nuclear chromatin, causing the transcription of DNA. To RNA, and then eventually what? The translation of the RNA to proteins. So you have translation here.
hormones that fall under this class and act via this mechanism of action are the steroid hormones, example, progesterone, testosterone, estradiol, or the hormones of the adrenal cortex. Now, notice the hormones that act via the secondary messenger system have their action in prompt. In other words, they act promptly and are easily degraded. Now, their effect all right, is all right, diminished when the secondary messenger systems are deactivated. So drop your comments in the comment section below and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.